Hello, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. I'm so excited to be painting live with you again. I've had some glitches, but I am back, and we are going to paint this adorable bee painting today. Um, I'm going to show you how quick and easy that is, and I'll show you the materials I'm using. I'll show you step by step how we do this. I'm going to pull you up on my computer, so if you have any questions as we go along, please jump in and ask away. So let me pull you up, take a second, and then we will get going. All righty. So this little bee, I did a whole series of little whimsical animals, which was, um, which are pretty cute. And um, I like the bee especially. And with spring coming, I'm thinking spring already. It's pretty warm here today in New England. We are at uh, in the 40s, which is great. And then we'll be back to winter on Sunday, I'm sure. So thank you guys for popping in. It's so great to see you again. I've been missing in action because I had some little technical difficulties. So, and you know that I always will record these sessions too and put them up later. So if you didn't see me live, still ask questions in the comments because I'm reviewing them as we go along. Alrighty. So, um, Oh, and if StreamMad asks for permission, uh, grant that and you can, um, I can see you on the chat right here and you may already be here. So let me see. Oh, hey guys. Hey, Linda, working on taxes. You know what? I was doing that the other day and it's not my favorite thing at all. I have my business taxes due um, back in November because I'm on a different schedule and now personal. It seems like it never ends. Hey, Diana. Yeah, I love bees too. I need to get StreamMad. Yeah, it's... um. It take, takes a little getting used to, but I do love StreamYard, and you will get the hang of it. But if you have any questions, message me. I'll be happy to answer them, okay? Thank you, Paula. I'll show you real quick before we get started, if you want, some of the other little animals I did. And I haven't really done any classes or anything on these. I did a whole little series. Actually, I did a big giraffe, but I don't have that handy. But I have a little pig. I have a hippo, um, a cow. My favorite, again, is the zebra, and then we have an elephant. So I'm going to do the bee today. And if you guys like these or like a particular one, let me know, and we can um, paint them again, too. So I'm going to get started because I do need to paint my background. I just did a sketch on it with a pencil on a canvas panel here. The bee is a little bit higher, so I could put some flowers down here. Let me get rid of this banner so you can see a little easier what, what I'm painting. Um, and I'm going to just freehand the, the little flowers down here. Very easy to draw. You can, you can trace it, but I just, look at, you just got a circle here, a little bit of a body, and it's pretty freehand, which is kind of nice. It doesn't take a lot of prep time. You can paint it on a canvas. You could paint it on a piece of wood. You could paint it in your mixed media um, journal pad. I have found lately on my mixed media pad that um, I like to put a coat of gesso on there. You'll see that your paint dries kind of quickly when you're working on the paper, it drags a little bit. So I have coated when I use my mixed media, um, I coated the pages with gesso first and that really does help. Okay, pull those comments up. Oh, hippo, yeah, I mean, they're also fun. Where do you stop? I've done, like I said, I have a really cute giraffe on a tall um, 10 by 20 canvas. The animals are super fun. Um, inside our membership this month, I do have a paid membership as well. We're doing this adorable bunny for um, Easter and spring. He's pretty cute. We've done a lot of animals. We did a snowy owl last night. So in addition to my page where you're seeing me here, YouTube and on Facebook, I do have a private membership, a paid membership. It's not a lot, but you get some original artwork, uh, maybe like four paintings a month, and then you also um, get the rights to use those paintings um, in your own classes and things. Um, so enough talking. Let's get to painting. We can chat while we while we paint. So I like the turquoise background for this guy. So I'm really just going to take a wider brush. I do love my hog bristle brushes, the filberts. It's a bristle brush, so it's a little bit um, stiffer than your acrylic uh, synthetic brushes. I like the filbert shape. It's a little rounded. I have just a couple of these in my kit and I like the way because of the stiffness of the brush, they dig into the little nooks and crannies of the canvas nicely. They push the paint around nicely, but you can also use your synthetic flat, a good size flat. That works fine. Too. You can use your chip brush, whatever you like. I want a pretty simple background. I don't want to take away from our design here. So all I did was 
brush on some of the turquoise or the blue and add a little bit of white so it's not just a solid background. If it was a solid background, we would have to try carefully to cover um, the transparency of the paint. But so I have just done a little bit of turquoise, taking just some white on my brush now, and I'm going to just kind of crisscross it. And I like the painterly look that I get when I do that. Now you don't have to, if you like more of a smooth background, you simply just keep brushing it till it's all blended. I like um, the look of my paint stroke showing. I'm gonna paint right over his little antenna. I'm painting right over his wing because we wanna put the wing on and have that background showing through. The wing would be a little transparent. But can you see, I'm just gonna go in one corner, work out so that I can work wet and wet. If I wanted to have a nice blend like that, I wouldn't start here and then jump somewhere else because when I meet, then my paint would be dry. So I'm going to work from the wet paint out and it gives me a chance to really blend wet and wet. So I'm gonna paint my background. A good idea to have a hairdryer or a heat gun handy maybe if case you want to dry a, a bit of the painting that is wet. I'm trying to paint around my bee, so I may not have to try to speed up the background drying, but um, but we'll see. Sometimes I paint the entire canvas and just sketch my bee on or my design on with chalk afterwards. That's an option. I just figured this would dry a little quicker, keep this area blank, and then I could paint my bee on there without worrying about this being wet. Even though flowers are going here, I am going to paint right down to the bottom. And I'm just using a little crisscrossy stroke. You could use a little circular stroke, anything but just back and forth. If I'm painting an ocean or painting water, I will do the back and forth stroke. But other than that, I like to use a textured stroke. One of the reasons being that acrylic paint is a little transparent sometimes. And if you use this sort of stroke, you are not gonna see all of the little uh, background showing through. Paula, don't worry, I'm going to, um, this will this will live on the page and, and I have a recording too. And, and from time to time, I can send those recordings out to you, but you can always find them on the page. And that is probably good enough. I know it's a little shiny because of the paint being wet and it's the camera picks up the shine, but you can always go back in and add a little bit white here and there if you like it. I think that looks fine. You'll see better what it looks like when it's dried, but you can see how it's just rough, just a little bit of a something in the background, but not lots of details because I want your eye to be looking at the bee, maybe on the, then move down to the flowers. I don't really need your eye to be too overwhelmed by a lot of uh, stuff going on in the background. Okay. So now I am going to, I will hit it with the uh, heat heat gun for a minute because I don't want to put my hand in it because, um, you know, I have enough paint on my every sleeve of every shirt I own. So um, let me see if I can, I'm going to mute this so I'm not uh, blasting this in your ears. So just take a second. Okay, so it's pretty dry to the touch now. Hippo, I know the hippo is kind of fun. Um, yeah, they're all fun. Maybe I'll do a little series. I, I wasn't crazy about them, to be honest, and I painted the pig over the other day, but um, I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think. Okay, B, I'm going to get a little black paint out. I have for colors. I don't need a lot of colors for this little painting. I've got black and white. The red is so that I can make a pink for my flowers and for her little cheeks. You could certainly use a pink you have, but I, I a lot of times will, will mix from my primary colors. I have a couple of shades of yellow, so I have my cad yellow. I do love that yellow ochre. Give it a little base. Maybe I'll mix it with that more of an orangey yellow. Mix it for a little base of the yellow stripes and then go lighter on top. I'll show you as we go, though. Pretty simple. She's got little eyeglasses on, which you can add or leave off. You can put the little crown of flowers on if you like. It doesn't have to. You don't have to, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the yellow stripes first. They're the lighter color. Then when I'm doing the black, if I need to reshape it all, I can go right over that. You can use any flat or filbert, whatever brush you like. Um, I'm probably going to use a little flat brush. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. Just There's synthetic brushes, just the little flats. 
And yellow is a really translucent color. I'm probably going to take my yellow. I'm going to go with the darker. I'm going to start with the, because the bright yellow is so translucent, I'm, I'm going to start with the yellow ochre, which is like, like a golden color. It's like a gold yellow. And I'm just going to paint that one stripe in. I might even add a little of that orangey to it. And I'm just always turning my painting every which way, whatever makes it easier for me to make a stroke. You don't have to always have it up on an easel or, or lying straight up. You can do whatever is comfortable. There are no rules. So do what works for you. And he's just got two, she's just got two little stripes here. Anybody else anxious for spring? I know some of you live in the places where it's warm, but we're not in the warm places. So yes, I'm not even just for the weather, but just to um, do some springtime paintings, fl more flowers and, and uh, cute little things that make me think of spring. So it's going to end up much brighter than that, but I am starting it with that darker color. So many times when I paint most things, I paint dark, start dark and in layers it get lighter and lighter so that last layer pops if it's a nice bright it's a nice way to um to work i think so i'm going to just rinse that brush off i'm going to paint in the black sections and like i said it's pretty easy to sketch this painting on you can just start i started by just sketching the round head kind of an oval round it's not completely round but uh, black's great it covers so easily for you I'm just using the tube, uh, not the tube, but the craft paints. I did a fun painting this morning um, of an angel, but I used the heavy body acrylics just to play around with those. I like the Liquitex tubed paints. I know a lot of you in my groups have talked, I ask you always, like, what are you struggling with in your artwork? And, and what people have been saying a lot this week is people. People are intimidating. People are hard to paint. Um, so I thought I would do a little angel painting because we have been wanting to do an angel, but I wanted to give her a face. I know you see many of those angel paintings out there now and they kind of don't have the face on them. I wonder if I brought it down with me. Oh, I did. Uh, while we're waiting for something to dry, I'll show it to you. But I painted a little face on her so that we could go ahead and do a little lesson on faces, simple little faces, trying to get over the intimidation of painting people. So on the, on the page, I'll get a little tutorial of the face there for you. The angel painting itself is going to be for our membership um, painting, one of them for March. But on the pages here, you will find me painting the faces so you could get an idea. Of, it's not too hard. You don't have to make it into a portrait. It doesn't have to be a, you know, like an oil painted portrait. It's just a little face on a little angel. And it's a good way to start to get your feet wet um, painting people. So I am just drawing my little black stripes of the bee in taking only one coat which is fabulous we don't have to keep recoding that now if you're more comfortable certainly you could use your little um, liner detail brush and outline the sections if you found you that's easier for you please by all means do what works for you I love the um the flat brushes though because I can get a nice wide stroke but if I use it on the chisel edge I can get a really thin stroke and it's very versatile so when i'm painting with my flats i can twist them around and get um some thin lines too okay so there we are with the black i'm going to rinse that off because we really don't need that big brush with black on it anymore i am going to put my little antennas in since we're working in black with the uh, little liner brush whenever i'm doing detail work or almost anything after i've been painting a little while because the paints dry pretty pretty quickly um except when we want them to, but um, I add water to my paint. When I'm doing detail work, I want that paint to flow nice for me. I don't want it to drag. So I want it more the consistency of ink than um, heavy body paint. So I've just thinned it down a little bit. I'm gonna make two little strokes for the antennas. I'm gonna start out, work in, and with a little round, I can give it a little more pressure, pick it up and come in and get a kind of a cute little antenna. So it's just a press down a little bit, lift up, bring it in. And that's, I've done a lot with brush strokes with you guys, like just practicing brush strokes and then incorporating them into flowers and things. But really you could just practice this on, on your, on your paper or your styrofoam plate, just pressing and pulling. It's like a little polywog stroke. 
And you can be able to use that in lots of things when you're painting, decorative little touches. Um, and it's nice just to practice control, brush control. Alrighty, now I am going to highlight my yellow sections, make them a little brighter. I did like this, this bit of an orangey yellow and you can see that has dried up on my palette quite a bit. A, a little tip, and, and I don't do this, but I should. If you take your little plate or your tray and wet your paper towel, squeeze them out so they're just damp, not dripping. And you can line your little plates with that wet paper towel and put your colors on top and you will get a lot longer um, painting time without it drying out so fast. Why I don't I do that, I don't know, but I should keep that in mind for myself too. So I'm gonna want the edges of this little section to be a little darker. It's really not showing up much different than the um, the gold. So I don't know if I need really much of that. I thought this, this orangey yellow would show up a little better, but I'm just gonna brush a little on. I have some of that blue showing through here. So I'm just gonna brush a little on. And now I'm going to take my light cad yellow. Because of the transparency of the yellows, if you add a little white to yellow or any color that you're using and it's transparent, you want to give it a little more oomph, you want to have it a little more opaque, add a little white to it. It really helps. So I am going to take that color. I'm not going to paint over everything I have here. I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle of that little stripe. I want it to be a little darker on the edges and a little lighter here in the middle. And I'm using a big brush. You might want to use a little smaller brush. But again, whatever is comfortable for you. If I if it's not showing up, I'm adding some white right to it. And a little more white here. As I lose the color, I just add a little more. You get a little boo-boo like that. Super easy to fix while it's wet. Just grab my brush looks all blurry there. Grab a brush, wet clean paint, and look at you can wipe it right off. Easy as that. If you don't notice it and it dries, it's simple to fix. You just take the color and paint over it. That's what's great about acrylic paints. You can fix all your mistakes. I don't want people to worry. They come and they start, and sometimes they're a little, little intimidated and afraid to um, really jump into it. But I try to let people know you can fix anything. It does not have to um, stay. If you, if you don't like it too much, first of all, you're going to love it in the end. In the middle, it has growing pains you're painting, and it's not going to look its best, but get to the end without really fussing about it, you will be so surprised. Um, but don't worry too much as you're going along because in the end, if there's something you don't like, you can paint right over it. Oh, Diana, um, the angel, let me quickly show it to you. Um, this is gonna be one of our Cardis paintings for March, but it's just a very simple little face. As, instead of just having one of those black angel faces, I wanna teach you the, the face. So we'll we'll make a little, I'll make a little video for you guys and put it on, on the, Learn to Paint group and the Tinker's Card Art group. And then uh, the Cardist will be doing that whole painting next month. I'm taking just white now on my brush. Because my yellow is a little wet, it's not going to show up as a big white brush stroke. But I want it to get lighter in the middle like that. It's giving it some dimension. You've got a little shadow, say, around the edge. And if it's light in the middle, it's giving it some roundness. It's, it's showing as three-dimensional as, you know, we're making a two-dimensional uh, canvas look a little bit um, rounded. So I'm gonna make it a little brighter as we go, but I'm gonna let that dry. I kinda like the painterly look of it. If you did not like it so much, you could just take the color we used on the edge and just softly blend. You've time because this paint's still wet. I myself like the look of the brush stroke, but if you don't, certainly just soften it a little bit. I'm gonna go back and brighten that in a minute though. In the meantime, let's sketch on where the wings are going to go. I'm going to use just a little piece of chalk, which is very handy to have in your painting kit. When you're going along and you want to sketch or try something, chalk is great because you can just erase it and start over um, if you don't like where it goes. So it's going to have, he's going to have a couple little wings like this. And same over here. And a nice technique to make those look transparent is just using some, just water on your brush and some white paint. So I'm going to take just a, just a, my flat, take some water on my brush. I'm not, I don't have it dripping. I just have it wet. 
I might pat it off a little bit. I don't want it dripping. And I'm going to take some white paint on the corner of that brush. So it's just the corner loaded with the white paint. Pat it off just to blend. And I am going to use that white paint towards the outside edge of my wing. And what I'm after here is just a white outline that has softly blended towards the middle. And because I've loaded my brush with water and just white on one side, I can do that nice blend with one stroke pretty much. See, it's just water and white paint. I'm gonna do the same on the other wing, but I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm going to just go over here and do the same thing on this side. So I've used, I just tapped into a little white on the corner. I'm using the white paint towards the outside edge because that's where I want that line. It's a little bit of something you might want to practice just to get the amount of the brush right. But I just do it a few times to get that nice and blended. I want it a little wider in the middle, so I just take that white that's on there. I'm stroking it on here. It's very translucent, and this time we want the paint to be translucent. So you can pull some of that in if you need to. Take a little more white and do the same thing over here. I'm putting a very light, watery coat of white on. And when it dries, it might have might sink in and it might not be bright enough, but let that let it dry and then you can address that if you need another coat. So you can see now it looks a little see-through. I'm going to do the same thing. So all I do is I take some white paint on my, I mean water on my brush, pat it off. I don't want it dripping. And then just dip the corner in the white. And this is something, again, you can practice on your palette. I, I tap it a little bit to blend it. And I'm just going to do the other wings the same way. I've got a little drop of water there. Let me scoot that off. Okay, so... And if I run out of white paint, I'm just going to grab a little more. Same thing, just kind of let it blend on the brush. Scoot over here, do the other one here. Might even be a little whiter here, which we'd want because it's two transparent wings on top of one another. And I am going to get that a little bit whiter in the middle as well. So I'm just taking a little white paint now and just sort of patting it in there. It's watered down white paint so you can see through it. We'll put some little vein lines and a brighter white on top of this. My chalk lines all erase afterwards. I might make it just a little bit brighter here. And you can see that background through, which is what we want. And then that will dry pretty quickly because it has got a lot of water. Cuter when he has a face. So let's give her a face. Um, sometimes when I'm doing animals or people, I try to get their eyes on there as quick as I can because then they look a little alive and, and they have a little personality. So her little face really is, and, and you can sketch it on if you need to. Where he, I'm going to put little glasses on her. I think I will sketch it just to give me an idea. She's got her little glasses. And she just does a little bit of lips there. And I'm going to just freehand some little um, rosy cheeks. All my whimsical animals and even the little people, like the little angel, does have a little rosy cheek. I want it to be thin. I don't want it to be a harsh circle. Um, so I'm going to just mix up a little pink. Got some red and white here. Mix up my pink. But I'm going to keep it watered down a little bit thin. When I'm watering down my paints like this, I don't know really what it's gonna look like until I put it on the painting. So I'd rather go a little lighter, darken it up if I need to. I'd rather go and do it in layers. So I've got washed out paint there. I'm going to just do like little spiral circles for her cheeks. So I just plunk the brush down and I kind of circle it around and I don't mind it being um, a little rough on the edges. I want it to be more of a soft edge. And so that's just little pink circles, rough circles. I'm gonna take a little white on top because I wanna lighten it up and I just want to add a little highlight. So I'm taking my same brush, I'm not gonna wash it off. I'm just gonna wipe it off, take a little white paint and just do the same thing on top. I'm put it on a little bit of an angle so you can see me doing that. Go right out over the edge, a little white paint, plunk it in the middle, spiral out. 
And I like it when it has a little bit of a rough edge. I do my suns and my moons that same way. Use a bigger brush, plunk it down, spiral out and around. Eyes, the little eyeglasses are going to be, um, you could be any color. I made them yellow, which means it's never going to show up. So I'm going to paint them in white first, and then the yellow will show up on top. So let's just paint the glasses in white. And again, I'm not worrying about copying my lines perfectly because they're going to certainly just erase afterwards. So that's my little eyeglass in the white. And you can do them any color you want, but you might want to, on a black background like that, you might want to paint them in white regardless of what color you're going to be using because it'll just make it a lot easier when you go to add the color. And we've got the little stems there of the glasses. And we'll just let it dry and we'll paint it yellow after. Since I have my little detail brush and I have white on it, we can make the little veins. So again, because I'm doing detail, I'm going to thin it a little bit. And I'm going to make vein lines inside my little bee's wings. Just rough little lines. They may not look just like a bee's wing, wings if you were to look at a real bee, but you can kind of see those little lines. Yep. I may even outline. This wing is showing through this one, so we would see the little lines through there. I think some of them have a little thing like that. And as you go, if your paint gets too thick and too heavy of a line, less pressure, but also you can always add a little water back in there if you need it. So I will also, I think, just give my, my um, wing a little outline. There is a heavier white line there from the technique that we used. But sometimes I like to finish it off and just make it a little bit brighter and just around the outer edge there. And background color. I like the turquoise. I like the way it, oh, Diana just said happy colors. I like the way it goes with the yellow and pops. But again, you could use any color background. When I'm doing these paintings, um, I really encourage you to make them your own in all different ways, different colors, leave the flowers, add flowers, do different flowers, add a bird. I love it when, um, when I paint with the kids, they do exactly that. Their little bee would be wearing a crown and then they'd paint a dragonfly next to it. And then they would do, I love the way they don't worry about copying it exactly. They make it their own. And that's um, an important thing. Make your paintings your own. They don't have to always look like mine. They will never, I will, when I paint this the second time, it's not going to look the same. So when people come in and say, oh, my, it doesn't look like yours. It's not supposed to because we don't want them to look like mine. I can't make mine look like mine. Um, so just have fun with it. Take a look at it. Keep it, keep it um, true to you and you will be much happier. Oh, little lips. Same pink. I'm going to just go make that pink up again. A little pink and white. Little lips are just, I just do them like this. I do a little shape like that to start. Make it go up a little. I have a tendency to make them look like they're frowning. It's that little shape. It almost looks like a mustache. Then I just do a little smile underneath. Little lips. I give them a little highlight. I just take a little bit of white. I just make a little highlight on that bottom lip. And that's kind of spread out. You can make little rosebud lips if you like. You can make them any way you want. I just give them a little white highlight. I'm going to blend that a little. It's wet on wet. I'm just going to dry off my brush and just soften it. Like I said, her lips got a little big. You can adjust them if you want to. You can take some black and give her a little bit of lipectomy and just kind of fix it if you think it needs to. But just little lips for my little B. Okay, eyes. Eyes are just going to be white circles, um, blue irises, and then little black pupils. You can paint little circles. Remember the trick, though, if you take a wide end of a brush with your paint, you can always give it a, make a nice circle that way. 
I don't want to wait for that thick paint to dry, but if you have trouble with little circles, that's a good way to do it. I'm just going to paint on some little circles just with my white paint. You could always put them in with chalk if you needed a little guidance there, but if I paint one, I'll just try to line the other one up with it. These are VIs, so it's not like they have to be perfect. And we'll let that dry. If we need to, we'll add another coat of white, but we'll let that dry. Hey, Betty. Thank you guys all for popping in at last minute like this. I'll give a little highlight maybe to their cheeks. I gave a little highlight to the wings. I just did this. I just did a little white line on the inside here. It's just a little white line there, just a little highlight. Try not to put my hand in the wet spots, but that's that. I want to get it a little brighter in the middle of the yellow. So I'm just going to go back to the same brush I was using, take my yellow paint, maybe take a little white, get it a little brighter. And I'm just going to, in the middle, almost do these little crisscross strokes, not going out to the edge because I want those edges darker. And like I said, this is something you could just keep building up and get it as bright as you. Oh, <laughs> boy. Don't do it on the black section. Um, do it on the yellow section. And actually, I did not highlight my black stripes, but what I would do if you wanted to, or whenever I paint anything black, animals, fur, I highlight with blue. If you highlight with white, you're going to get gray. It turns into a very dull painting. I highlight all of my dark. Um, I don't know if I have any examples right here. Actually, I don't. But I do highlight with blue. But I don't think it needed it here, so I left it. And let me just do what I meant to do, that light color right in the middle. And can you see I'm not going to the edge because I want it to stay darker there. I'm using like little crisscrossy strokes. If I wanted to, I could re-wet that dark yellow and really blend it nicely. I kind of like the brush strokes showing. Now I'm taking just straight white right on top here a little bit, blending with my yellow, but just doesn't he have a, a good little rounded shape now? Okay, and now we can do the glass rims. That's all dry. We'll do that. We'll get them all done, and then I'll show you the technique I use for the flowers, which is a kind of a technique you could do on anything, really. You don't have to just have it on this painting. Um, you could add these little flowers some, on something else. So let's just do the yellow glasses. And I'm just going to really just paint right over what I had there. If for some reason you were doing your white and it, you saw the black through quite a bit, you could always do a second coat of the white. This is a little wet still, but um, you'll get the idea. I can always touch up the wet bits after. Even if I am going over some of the wet, it drags in a little of the white and it looks kind of like a little highlight, so it's probably not a bad thing. There, little eyeglasses. The little eyes, I think I'll do another coat of white for those eyes. Right on the edge anyway, so the middle you won't see. But let me just go around the edge with a little more white. And then after we do the flowers, we can come back and, and do the details there. So that's that. Um, everything is done except for our flowers now. Now, again, you can change any color flowers you would like. They are all going just a little... A little bit of flowers up here, like a little crown. Um, I think I'll paint them green in first to give them something to sit on. They're not going to be, it's not going to be all a bunch of little individual leaves to start, but I'm going to just take some of my green. I've got like a phthalo green here, which I love when it's mixed with, you know, the yellow makes a really pretty green. But I want a base to start on. I want it to be a little darker. I'll take a tiny bit of black just to deepen that up. All I'm doing is the place where the little flower crown is going to go. And I'm going to paint my flowers on top of that. But if I do this and then I paint a little cluster of flowers, I don't have all these empty spaces behind. I have the greenery behind. These guys down here are pretty big, so we're not going to worry about that. We'll just put little leaves around them afterwards. You can kind of see. Um, I'm going to just paint these big flowers. I'll show you. It's a kind of a cool technique, similar to what we did with the veins, with the brush strokes. And then here I just did that green uh, backdrop 
and then pop the flowers in. So why don't I go ahead and show you down here because the bigger flowers will be easier to show you the technique of. Same thing, but we're going to use a tiny brush for the ones up above. So what I do is I double load my brush again. I'm going to take probably use a nice size flat. I'm going to get a pink on my brush. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white and red again. Might need a little more white. So let me get that a little darker. I'm going to use white on the edge of my brush. So I want it to show up. So I'm going to get this kind of a deep pink. I want a little clean white to dip into. And again, just like I did before, only I used water on my brush. Now I just have loaded my brush with pink. I'm going to dip my corner of my brush into the white. It's hard to see, but you can see it there. But before I go to the canvas, I always want to pat it down a little bit to, to blend it a bit. And then with that white to the outside edge of the petals, I am just going to use a little pressure press and make a petal in one stroke. This is a little bit more advanced technique. It's something that takes a little practice, but you can always, if you wanted to, just paint your flower in pink and then do a little white on the edge with a small brush. But for now, I want to kind of show you this because it's something to work towards in practice. I just reload my brush with the pink. I dip on with a little bit of um, white on the corner, but using the light on the outside edge and I just make my petals. You might get a couple petals out of one brush loading, but I do like it to have it nice and white on the edge. So I sometimes just take a little bit more white, press down, you need a little pressure to get that shape. And that's just a little bit of a flower peeking. I didn't wanna do whole flowers floating. I wanted to do them sort of peeking out from the bottom. So for each petal, I just go and get my pink, take a little bit of white, and then just give it a little pat. And I'm going to do another one of those flowers here. That one you can see did it get it got lighter on the edge, but it didn't get white. So you can always take a little bit more white and do it again, or just go on to the next one. And using a bit of pressure to get that brush, the paint to, to lay down. I'm going to do like a center here, so I'm not going to worry about the bottom there. And I just keep going. I'm just going to load up with my pink. This is just a little one on the corner sticking out over here. Add the white if you need it. Pat it down a little bit. And those are just the little bits sticking out. And I'm going to do a few yellow ones in between. I'm going to try not to touch the pink and get it all smudged because ideally I would let that dry. But I'm going to do a yellow flower the same way. So we're going to take some of this yellow. I'm going to give it some of this gold just to give it a base and have it a little more opaque. Same thing, just loading the brush, then dipping the corner into the white paint. But do pat it off first. I don't want to do it into the turquoise there. So let me reload that. A little bit of white. If I can find a little clean spot, I just kind of pat it down a little bit so it gets a little bit of a blend. And then I'm going to have just like little bits of the flower peeking out from behind there. If you need more yellow, just add it and then go into your white. Sometimes you'll have enough from the base color. This is gonna be one behind here. And I'm just doing the same thing, more yellow, a little more white. Reloading, I'm pretty much reloading after every petal. So maybe sometimes I could get another one, but you don't get the nice white edge. So it's not a bad idea just to get new color each time. A little bit more of that. Maybe have this one sticking out here. I would probably overlap onto the other flowers, but where the pink one's wet at this point, I think I'll skip it. And I have a space here, so maybe I'll make a little bit of pink, a yellow sticking out. So that's the basic flowers. Then we're going to pop a little center in. I just did the centers in kind of a, looks like, like a dark blacky maroon since we have these colors out we'll just take I always make my own maroon I just take a little black and some red it seems to be a lot more opaque when I make it myself than the jarred maroon the, the bottled ones so I just made up a maroon there and I just put a nice big center in the middle I'm not making a perfect circle I'm kind of making it a little wiggly and just well, the ones that are peeking out, you just get a little bit maybe sometimes, then you can have a bigger one for these bigger guys. Just something in the middle there. There, 
So those are the big ones on the bottom. And the same thing I'm going to do up here on the little ones, but with a little brush, but the same um, technique. So let me get to find a little square brush here somewhere. So I've got a little square brush, and that will work fine. I did them yellow up there. You could do any color. Let me see. That's actually a little bit too big, I think. I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Um, same yellow I'm going to use. Dip the corner into some white. I'm going to work upside down so that I don't put my hand in those flowers. And I'm just going to make these little flowers. My yellow looks super transparent. I think I'm going to take this gold color and base coat like we did the stripe. Let's just kind of give it a little base coat and we'll come back and do our nice strokes after. I'm just going to make the where the flowers are going to go in the in the yellow ochre just to give us a little base. When I do a little flower crown like that, I don't want to just have the flowers. I also want to have like little petals peeking out from the edge. So it looks like it's a little looser and drapier. And I also bring the little leaves out and about too. I do, um, if you're doing bigger leaves, you could really do this technique with the leaves. But for now, I'm just doing little colored leaves, little solid leaves. I'm going to make up a little bit lighter green. I love that um, phthalo green with some of the cad yellow. It makes a really pretty bright green. So I'm not going to bother looking for the green that I might have. I'm just going to make up a green. And I'm just going to use little strokes for these little leaves. I just take my brush, press a little bit, twist, and I make little leaf shapes in one stroke. If you have different colors on your brush, so I have green here and it's yellow, but I didn't mix it really well. You could make these little strokes, um, find a little place. And you'd almost have a little mix of colors on there, which is nice. So I'm just a little press, pull, and you get a little a little, a little comma, like a little leaf shape. I'm going to bring these peeking out here and there. They don't have to always be on the edge. They could also overlap onto a little leaf, which is tough now because we didn't finish the flowers yet. But I want to give you the idea. So see how I kind of bring them out a little bit? Now, on top of the little black, head of our bee, we make that green a little brighter, maybe add a little white because it will help with the with the translucency. And then out here where we've got a lighter background, you can make a darker leaf and it will, will show up nice back here because you see how nice the dark ones show. So I have a variation. I have some light ones, some middle tones of green and then some dark ones. And give that a minute and then we can do our little brush strokes on there. Thank you. Well, thanks, Barbara. We have such a to-do to list, though. Do you, are you like me with, like, oh, my, my mind doesn't stop. I've got more ideas of things to do. So it's kind of nice. It keeps us busy. Flowers, leave down here. I'm doing the same way. So some I might take just in that phthalo blue, yeah, a green, and just make, see the little strokes I'm using? Just a little press and pull. I want kind of a lot of them so I can overlap and have some on top of each other. I can take some and put them on top of other flowers there. Remember, they're a cluster of flowers. They're not all pasted on the same level. So you would want to overlap some. Just put them here and there, fill in any little spots, change up the color. I've got that blue green now, but now I'll take some with the yellow and get some lighter shades. Some of them are a little combination of yellow and green. And you get all different shades. And if you'd like to get fancy, you could take that dark green. And sometimes I would, or any green, doesn't have to be the dark green, but then you could just almost make like a little, with the brush on the chisel edge, you get a little line. And then you could just make some little leaves coming off it. So it's like a little viney thing almost. You could put some of those in just for fun. And again, you could take this little technique and make flowers on anything. All right, so the only thing that they need now is some detailing on the little centers, but let's let that dry a little bit. Let's go up here and make those little flowers um, that we were gonna try before, but it was too wet. Even the damp brush, if this is all dry now, look, I can take and just get rid of all my little chalk lines. It's, I always like to get those out of there. So you can get rid of the chalk lines if they have any showing. And the little flowers, same same technique. 
they'll show up much better now. We have a base. And um, I'm going to take the yellow and maybe a little white just to get it a little more opaque. And then I'm just going to dip my corner in the white like we did before, pat a little bit. And you can make these little petals. They're tiny. You're not going to really see it that much. And, and it might be something you just want to paint little one-stroke flowers on. But since I showed you the technique, I want to show you that you can use it even with little tiny petals. So this is a little tinier, and I'm getting, they're so small, I'm getting a lot of strokes out of just loading my brush once. As long as I can see that white on the tip, and I will hold this up closer for you in a minute. So you can see that they're just a little bit more detail to them because they have the goldy bit showing through maybe, the lighter yellow, and then with the white on the tips, it saves time doing them all in one little stroke. It makes for a nice little scent, a nice little flower. The little centers of those on top, I think I did more pink, and I just am going to take and just drop little pink centers in. And you can see I did not do like solid flowers, five petals, all in a row. I put some behind, some in front. I'm just putting these little random centers here and there. And that's all you need for that. I think I took just for fun because, you know, I can never be done. I made some pink, that little stroke like I was showing you, just little comma strokes, almost like they're a little pink flower peeking through. I have pink on my brush. I'm just going to do these three little petals peeking in, sometimes two. And they can peek behind a flower. Is it necessary? No, but it has a nice little touch. It fills in the little bits there um, nicely. So for the centers, these are a little more detailed, the little flowers. I'm going to take my dark maroon that I made. with my. I'm still working with that little liner brush. I've, thinned, I've got water on my brush here, so I'm thinning it down a little bit, that maroon. And I just make a few vein lines coming out. That's a bit dark and a bit heavy, so I'm going to thin it more, and I'm going to go a little bit lighter with more red. And just some little thin lines coming out from the center. Center. Show my Boston accent, center the center center I'll take that and paint super thin it's really watery I work from the center out so my line gets a little thinner just by itself I don't want to work out in I'd get a nice heavy end which worked great for the antennas but I wouldn't want to do that for these uh, the, the yellow flowers I'm going to use white little um, veins hey Kay thank you it's super simple if you, if you go step by step, it's super simple. So same thing here, just little white veins. Not as noticeable because you're on a light color, but still, even though something isn't jumping out at you and is super noticeable, it just gives your painting a little bit more finesse, I guess. I don't know, just adds a little bit of something, something. And now I just do a little center maybe, take your little white, you could just do like a little oval in the centers. And then dots. You can use the back end of your brush. You can use a little dotting tool. I'm just gonna do this little dots with my brush. And I just randomly put some dots out here at the end of these little veins, all white for now. And then I'll go around the center, so like little pollen dots, I guess, if you looked at your flowers under a magnifying glass, you'd see them. But I like the decorative touch that they add. And you see how it just sort of finishes it off nicely. And again, if you have a problem with the getting, and you don't want perfect circles, so you don't want to strive for that, but you can always use the back end of a thin uh, brush if, and just dot the little dots on. So I put them out like that. Then I take some and just scatter them around the center. They're on the center, they're on the outside. They're not a perfect little line. They are like the little pollen dots that you see on daisies and things. So you can take something that's realistic and then run with it. It doesn't have to look like the real flowers. I'm doing these more of the decorative kind of look. 
the little guys up here, I put some little dots on them, but I don't do as much detail as that. I just take my white paint and maybe just dot around the centers. Well, you could use different colors. You can make these all little white daisies if you wanted. And while we're here, let's do the eyes. He looks a bit like a zombie. I think um, I did. I did little blue eyes. So let me get some blue paint. A little blue paint. Just a dab. Just a tiny scooch for eyes. It's very dark, so I think I will lighten it up so you can actually see it so it doesn't look black on the eyeball. And it's just a little iris. I'm doing them right in the middle. You could do them looking off to the side. If you did that, you'd want them both like at 11 o'clock. You don't want to do like 11 o'clock and then 3 o'clock, and then you would have Marty Feldman uh, eyes on your beat. But do them either just in the center or if you do it to the side, do it the same on both. Little blue um, dots, little blue circles for the iris, and then little black pupils. And most important, other little white highlights we'll put in after. Eat people, animals, whatever has eyes, you need to put those little highlights in or to make them really come alive. I'm just dropping in, and, you, and at home, you might want to let this dry first. I'm just dropping in little black pupils. They are not um, super round, but and they're, and they're hard to see there, but blue iris in the middle, a little round black pupil. But the most important part is the tiny little white highlights Upper right is what I'm going to do, but you can do wherever. But again, if whatever you do, do it the same on both because otherwise they're going to be looking the wrong way. Um, I think I did a few of these little uh, bits up here. So I'm taking and, and wash and watering down my green and those little viney things. I just did a few sticking out up here just to make that little flower crown kind of explode a little bit. So they're just a little line and little leaves coming off it. I did it in a darker green so it would show up. And if you wanted to do any, I'm not going to do any down here. If you want to do any on the bee itself, I would add white or yellow, get a lime green, but we don't need to. There's no room really here. So I think that looks good. Um, and that is it. That's how easy this little bee is. Did it take long, right? What have we been painting for? How long? Well, 15 minutes, but still we did a lot of chit-chatting. Um, I'm going to read from Kay. Working on your grip. Yeah, you know what? We discussed this in my um, group about one of the struggles is trying to get a place to paint. Because sometimes it's like, I don't have a place to paint. And then you don't want to sit down and paint because it takes time to drag all the stuff out. And sometimes just a little corner um, of a desk or a little corner of a table and then get maybe one of those three wheely little carts and put all your stuff on it. It's easier to sit down if you could walk by and say, well, I'm going to paint for 20 minutes. You'll probably paint for longer, but it gets you to sit down. If you have to drag everything out to the dining room table or something, it does. It is a little bit of a roadblock. So we have been talking about that in the group. Um, and anyway, so there's our little bee. If you guys want to get a little notification on when I go live, you can text me at this number and I will send out a little heads up. And if you want to see more um, paintings, just put in the comments. Let me know which ones you liked. We can do more of those. And um, that would be great. So I'm so glad to get out and paint with you guys again. And um, that is our little whimsical bee. So thank you guys so much. And um, I will see you on the page. And like I said, text me if you want to be on my list. And if you want to um, get on my email list, just put email in the comments and I will send you a link to, to sign up for the email. So anyways, thank you guys. I will see you all soon. Have a great afternoon.